I'd like you to introduce to our speaker, uh, Ben Hancock. Uh, ben leads the Beef and Lamb Whole Farm Data Project. He was raised on his family Warrapa Hill Country Farm uh, and gets back as often as he can. He completed his PhD investigating ecosystem services and in 2019 completed his Nuffield Scholarship with his report focused on bioethics and their application to agriculture and society's wicked problems. He will demonstrate the soon to be launched beef and lamb greenhouse gas calculator and what is important to know your numbers. Thanks very much Ben. Cheers. Is he going? Yep. Uh, yeah, g'day. I'll start off um, with our, I just mentioned the Whole Farm Data Project which is sort of the core part of my role at the moment. It's going across 750 sheep and beef farms and this is going to be carried out in other uh, agriculture sectors as well. But for our sector, we're going to be collecting data from LUC mapping, uh, overseer analyses, and farm environment plans. And it's our opportunity to, uh, instead of saying, sitting back and saying that those, uh, those people in Wellington, uh, not, yeah, they don't know the reality of the farm, it's our opportunity to actually stick some truth into that, to, into that discussion. Um, but jumping on to this one, uh, over a couple of years, and Mark Harris here, many of you will know, who, um, We've been developing a, a yardstick, is what we're calling it. It's a KPI and benchmarking tool. And so, you know, anyone can, well, anyone, you can create your uh, key, ball, key performance indicators, um, but an advantage that the Sheep and Beef um, Survey has, which is run by the Economic Service out of Beef and Lamb, is that we have benchmarking data. We've got a representative sample across uh, 530 farms across New Zealand of financial and production data. And so we created this tool so the farmer could take his statement of accounts, plug them into this tool, and then benchmark his farm against this, um, similar farms of so a hard hill country east from the east coast of the North Island. And so he can see how he stacks up where he's performing well and where he's, um, he might have some areas to work on. In that, we have the, uh, a stop reconciliation. And so a colleague of mine is based here in, in the Manawatu. We've been discussing it that not, yeah, about 94, 96% of the emissions across the sheep and beef sector are coming from livestock. So if a farmer's already um, put together his livestock reconciliation, can we use the survey, that we, a resource that we have, to, uh, to create the, a GHG profile for the farms? Um, so what's driven us to, um, you know, the why? Why, why have we um, spent this time creating a GHG calculator? There's a partnership between industry, primary industries and the government um, to keep and um, to address climate change and, and agriculture's role in that. And this is for our for our sector our opportunity to keep ourselves out of the out of the emission trading scheme. So that, that's the carrot or the stick, depending on your perspective. Uh, there's a couple of milestones within the Hiwaki Economics. I've got a five year runtime, started last year, by the end of this year. 25% of the primary industries need to know their GHG profile, and 100% by the end of next year. Those are some, uh, some pressing milestones. So that, that's um, up the priority for this, for this project. The, so uh, uh, personally, and as, as an organisation, we don't want farmers legislated in to having to pay another subscription or another consultant to carry on farming. So the, the sort of philosophy behind this tool is a free, farmer-friendly tool that represents their farm system. So there's a couple of other free tools out, um, out. They both use opening livestock numbers. So if, we, if 94, 96% of the emissions are coming from your livestock and you're only using your opening livestock numbers, there's a, there's a fair bit of flux in there that um, it's not really representing what's happening, uh, the realities of that farm. So this is where we... Um, we stepped in. So we use the MFE calculator as a starting point. So they use um, the, I'll get on to it in a second, but there's a sort of official numbers for emissions for livestock in New Zealand. And so we weren't rushing out to recreate the science. We had a reasonably tight time frame. We we're going to adopt the science that's there. Um, the way that the, these greenhouse gas inventories are created essentially for each species you have, uh, they do a national livestock rec for the emissions. So they create a cloud of these gases for sheep, beef, deer and dairy. 
then they divide this cloud by the opening livestock numbers at, uh, at opening, and so and then they'll come up with these coefficients per head, per species or beef, dairy, cattle. We came in, um, but we know that, um, you know, taking sheep for example, that not all sheep are uh, created equal. And we, the first step we, we did with those coefficients is that we made them, we attributed those, um, the, those emissions to uh, the different livestock classes within, say, a species. So what we use as a base for that is essentially uh, stock units. So now, we're not using that as an absolute, a 55 kilo ewe with a lamb at foot, but a relative unit. So that, that sheep with a lamb at foot is eating more than a hogget. So from there, um, we, because they're using those livestock numbers at open, if we went out and applied our tool and did, it, did our stock rec with your natural increase, your lambs, calves, fawns, and we did that across the whole country with our tool, we'd end up with a, a whole heap more emissions on paper because we've gone and counted the, the livestock that's coming through. The, so we've got those coefficients that are more realistic of what's happening with those livestock. Still using the official numbers, just attributed a bit more with a bit more definition. The, um, the, la the third sort of bit of maths sitting behind that is I've created a, an FDE calculator essentially. So you'll have, so if we take mixed age use across the season, you've got a number that are there at the end and a number there, uh, sorry, at the start and at the end of the season. Then you'll have those that you've brought on and those that have sold. And so instead of, uh, you know, if you're just using opening numbers and they um, run through the end of the year, we'll bring in those that you've brought in and we using the survey by class and production region, so farm class, so hard hill country or finishing farm in that region, we have average transaction dates. So there's a balance with this tool of making it accessible to farms, but also representing the farmers. So we don't want farms going through every transaction because we need to get to 100% by the end of next year. So it's got to be approachable to the overwhelming majority of farmers. So using these, a farmer can put in his stock rec, and then sitting in behind that, we've got these dates for his class and region. And then we will have, say, if they've bought on 100 ewes and sold 100 ewes two months, two months later, if that's what happens in their region, they'll we'll essentially get a percentage of the year that those coefficients are on that farm. Uh, also, we don't want the farmer having to go out and get, get a consultant across the farm or go get another resource. What's on hand? What's, what do they have available to make the, again, to get the overwhelming majority of farmers to do this. So stock reconciliation. In our yardstick, as I mentioned before, we have the, uh, your statement of accounts. You've got those aggregated livestock rec in there. You've, your purchase sales, used on farm, losses, and, uh, and your births. Uh, also, for those that fill in the, the APS, the Agricultural Production Survey for stats uh, in June, those numbers uh, align with it. Uh, next is fertiliser use. Uh, the two big firms, they produce a report in May to help farmers fill in their APS survey of their fert use, and they'll break that down by nitrogen uh, elemental weight, so the, the percentage of nitrogen, potassium, um, phosphorus and sulphur. That's a reason, and th th it'll also be there in your, your statements as well, but you do get a summary from, those, from the two big companies. And then vegetation is the third one. And this is where they're more likely to have gaps, uh, but at this stage, an estimate um, will do. Uh, for, this, um, for this tool, we've used the ETS definitions uh, for now, um, but we are exploring, um, you know, one of, the, one of the comments we get back is that you've got exotic forests. But then if you've planted up a hillside with poplar poles connected up enough to fall within the ETS, that those, the sequestration of those poplar poles are the same as a stand of eucalypts or a stand of uh, pine trees. It, pragmatically, it doesn't quite make sense. So we're, we're working on that to see what we can um, come up with that's acceptable. You know, um, it, we, we want it, this tool has to be acceptable for Hewaki Ekanoa. That's, that's an overriding objective of it. What's not in there is it's a reporting tool. 
at this stage. Um, we've got concepts for how we could bring in uh, management later on, but that's it's a fair amount of work and we've got some pretty pressing milestones coming. Cropping is not in here, and that means we haven't done the tool for the mixed arable guys. It's a lot more complicated, uh, and it becomes quite, uh, the, the amount of information needed and detail explodes. Um, so at this stage, that's not in there, but we're looking, to, um, we've started talking with Foundation Arable Research of what tools they've got existing that can plug into here, because they have a, their shortcomings, I suppose, with some of the stuff that they've done is again, the livestock, because, um, so if we can pair up, pair those two tools together, we can have an answer for um, most of, uh, most of the livestock. We haven't got milking cows here. We've got uh, non-milking dairy cattle, so your grazers. Um, just the coefficient is a little bit different. The reason we don't have the milking cattle is we need transaction dates of that. So we've got that information from the survey. With that information, we could apply that to uh, the dairy sector and then we'd encapsulate a free tool that represents for livestock and arable systems. They pay a levy. <laughs> so coming into the tool, this sits on our website. Um, you'll, this is a, um, and it, this farm here is an assessment farm for, um, for Hiwaki Kanoa. So you come in, you log in, you go to your dashboard, and you've got a range of tools here. Um, the GHG calculator sitting here, this is on, on our test website at the, at the moment. Um, by housing it in here, we can get it to talk to other tools. So if you do your stock rec for GHG calculator, when the next tool comes along that requires a stock rec, say if it's a farm plan or a, uh, perhaps a lambing calculator or something, you've got that information, put it in once, and it just talks to everything. So um, just to make life easier. So that'll sit behind uh, in your account. Uh, this is the, the beta testing. Uh, model at the moment. We've got some refinements that we're working with our IT um, consultants at the moment. Uh, we've tested out with farmers and some industry people, including our economic service managers, um, who put it through its um, put it through its steps. Uh, no, it's not. No. Yeah. Um, you can save multiple farms in here, um, so you can separate your blocks out if if needs be, or if you're managing different blocks. Um, we will. Um, one of the changes that will come in is that you can actually put the farm name in there as well as the date. So you open up the tool and there's five tabs across the top here. Um, the first one's your farm. So this is where we enter in the farm detail. What is the farm? Uh, your fertiliser use and your sequestration. Uh, this is an um, example farm that was given to us from Hewok Ekanoa to populate. But we need to know your production region and the, and the farm class, the type of farm that you, you're running. And then uh, some, uh, yeah, some other um, information about the farm that, are, that does flow into some of the calculations in behind. Further down on the same page, we've got the fertiliser. So at the mo like, as I mentioned before, from the, um, from those, from the two main companies, you'll get the uh, breakdown of your products and the volume that you used, and then your total elemental uh, nitrogen use. We need it by these um, categories here. We've had a chat to the Fertilisers Association, if they can help us with that. In the meantime, we're going to be producing a table. Um, one of our ex economic service managers has about 400 different fertilisers in the elemental uh, weights that sit in, in behind that. So we'll have a resource to go with it, but if we could make it easier, so the report you get in May, it's just laid out in front of you. Three numbers, bang it in. It's quite likely that uh, limestone and dolomite might be dropped out of uh, Hiwaki Ekanoa. Um, that'll just be captured at the, at the manufacturing point. Um, so you'll be essentially paying for it on purchase, just like you do with your electricity or um, petrol. So it's, it's, it'll be captured elsewhere in the in the economy. Then at the bottom of the page, you've got your vegetation. Um, so as I mentioned before, we've used the ETS definitions in here. Um, and it is the, the main one where there's a, more likely to be a gap in the information that the farmer has. But once you've set it up, 
there'll be little change and you'll be essentially paying, you know, if you're doing some logging or if you're planting more trees, there'll be a bill at that, so you'll be recording it and how much area you're fencing off. So you, once you've set it up for your farm, you'll be up and running. We'll be producing information about what um, to accompany this of those definitions of what's in, what's out. And because it's a tool that we've created, we have the ability to introduce more categories or categories that actually represent what's happening on the farm. So then we, so all of that, um, once you've done that first page, the next three tabs are your livestock. And these can, for the most part, be populated from your statement of accounts. So that's a resource that you, you would have paid for already. Uh, this is the first page of livestock balances, is your opening and closing numbers. Now we've spread, separated out with owned on farm, owned off farm, so those that you've grazed out at balance date and grazed on at balance date. So that there isn't double counting, you need to separate what's on your farm and what you've owned. Uh, it still hasn't been settled on by uh, Hiwaki Ekanoa, but we've designed the tool to align with your production and financials, that it's what you have control and what you're profiting from and what's under your control. And you have control of what's been fed, so it's owned on farm and grazed on farm. If you've grazed it out, that grazier is, he's putting that feed into it, he has control over it. Uh, and with our production KPIs, if, they, if he's put on good, you know, put weight on those animals, that's his production, that's his grass. And if you've got them on your farm, it's your grass that's been belched back out. So that you have control on it. So that's why we've structured it um, going forward just to, it aligns with our, our yardstick tool. But if Hiwaki Ekanoa lands the other way, we can uh, quite quickly switch it over. Then we come into a grazing calculator. This is a new element that we've added in that we didn't have in the yardstick. Um, I come from the South Wairapa, we don't graze, and Tim comes from over here, and um, we, we tested out our yardstick down in, in Mossburn, and a bunch of those guys were doing deer grazing. It was a lot more complicated than we thought it would be. So we've separated out. Uh, on this farm here, you can see he's um, grazed out some new hoggets. You can do for the grazed on, grazed out. Um, the tally's on and off, um, whether on hand it open, or you can put the date in at the start of the season, but it's just easier to tick the box, and when they left or whether they stayed on at close. Uh, you can see here that he's grazed them out. He or her um, have grazed them out at a bit for a bit over summer. So, as I mentioned before, we, we build up a, an FDE calculator. You can see here that those um, these 808 ewe uh, hoggets were on the farm for 83% of the year. So you won't be... the the coefficients, the, the numbers that you multiply that number of ewe hoggets for, then gets multiplied by the 83%. So you're not getting the full whack of those animals for the whole year. Then we come into the uh, livestock movements. Um, again, I'll just we have this for deer, dairy, and beef cattle, but I'm just just to fit it on the on the screen. I'm just using it using the sheep. So these open on hand grazing numbers and on hand at close numbers are all carried on from the previous tabs. So from your statement of accounts, you'll have these summaries here, your lambing, uh, and then your, what you've brought onto the farm and what you've sold. Often the sta statement of accounts, your all sales are lumped together, but as, as the farmer completing it, you'll have an idea whether you, you know, sold all your, you know, just cold you use, or whether you sold, you know, a mob to the, to the neighbour. Uh, losses, this is, so this is something, um, that, that took a bit of refinement, but we've got a loss calculator in here. Um, that way there's no um, screwing the scrum that it, um, if your losses don't make sense, then you actually, your stock reconciliation hasn't added up properly. Uh, one trick is, is that you've got to uh, age up at close. So you can see these, uh, this, oh yeah, yeah. So these hoggets have been run through the year and then been aged up at close. Um, yeah, um, no, I'll keep moving. So then it's done. Uh, we have present how we've presented the results here as, as an organisation rep representing um, the, the red meat sector. We've produced it as split gases here, and these volumes are in the actual volume of those gases because, uh, in reality, Methane behaves a, a lot different from uh, CO2 and nitrous. 
Uh, they, nitrous and uh, carbon dioxide persist in the environment for quite a long time, whereas methane has a shorter lifespan. Uh, but the common, the common language and the conversations when you t um, people are talking about emissions is in CO2 equivalents. Um, so we've produced it here as well. Uh, when, when I've workshopped this, the prototype of this tool, this figure here, that, that emissions per hectare, was the, was the one that people would, you know, started making comparisons. Because if you're doing total volume, well, you talk, yeah, it's influenced by the size of the farm. And down here, um, your deforestation and then your vegetation offsets, and then you end up at the bottom here, your net emissions and CO2 equivalents. Um, we're going to add another metric in there, that number um, divided by the total area. So you'll have a net emissions per hectare, and that's uh, an objective of getting farmers to know their GHG profile, is to get them engaged and start thinking about it, talking about it, and that's uh, from from workshops, that's going to be the number that's going to be talked about down at the pub or the rugby club. So what's next? This is going to be released this month. Um, and like uh, as I mentioned earlier, those milestones that we have to hit to stay out of the, out of the ETS. So, oh, and I'm open to feedback on this, how we can make this simpler. Um, we need, um, there is a, a next stage coming with it. Um, one of the key things, like using the yardstick we, that you could use your statement of accounts, if we, it's called an API, but essentially you get a, a form that comes out of one tool and into the next, so it sets it up in a set format and gets sucked up by the next one. We will create that for the, um, the yardstick and the GHG calculator. So essentially, if your accountant's already got that information, we set with whatever software he's using, that he can press the button and it's done for you. Uh, and in terms of getting that 100% of the accountants are out there doing it, we, we can make some real good headway. Uh, we've got support from Chartered Accounts of Australia, uh, Chartered Accountants of Australia and New Zealand. Uh, they're going to support us with the rollout of this and the yardstick and, and messaging around the Hiwaki Ekanoa. Um, yeah, cropping. Uh, what about the, you know, the proprietary products? Or yeah, yeah. So uh, I've, uh, ANZ, a supportive. Uh, we uh, haven't talked to Cash Manager, but um, maybe next time when I'm uh, back home. Um, figured we've talked with them. Like the, and um, Farmax. I know that they're more interested in the, the benchmarking side. But a lot of these, yeah, it's we've done it. We've got this background information for the say for the benchmarking. It's going to be yeah. It's. Um, it's had quite good receptions. We've got processes, uh, suppliers, um, like yeah, the other tools, um, yeah, and, and one of the banks, but still talk to, say, um, Rabo. I've got to have a conversation with them about it. So it's, it's a free tool. Um, and, uh, can you, yeah? What about public perception? A lot of this is actually done for public perception. I understand. One of the confusion areas I see is that an expert we want to be carbon negative, as I'm saying, and not carbon positive, but that is perception itself. What, um, what sort of extrapolation or um, tools you given to actually somehow make people understand the carbon negative is actually a good thing? Because that's where people are actually got confused about the whole thing, if you see what I mean. So ideally you want a carbon negative answer to that, as I read that, right? Um, well, so if you go back and through the, the answer you had, yeah. you get back to that. So you've got a, um, the, the, the exotic forest comes off the argument, so yeah. that's not too positive. That, that, that unfortunately, the way it's set up is negatives actually end up having a positive result. It's got a positive spin on the whole thing, doesn't it? Yeah, so oh, this, this is a Hewaki Ekanoa reporting tool, and there are objectives for Hewaki Ekanoa, and and, and Hewak, that'll say like the pricing mechanism in Hewaki Ekanoa, that's not there to. Um, uh, necessary punish, but to, it's one of the tools to en to encourage uh, farm farm behaviour change to reach the objectives. Not and what those objectives are, I'm not 100% of. I've stepped away from the, the policy side of it. Uh, yeah, it's recent it's, time. There is confusion in the population in general, and in general, what's positive, and what's negative. We actually, am I correct? We actually through the surroundings negative. <coughs> and, and, and that's the, the, the figure that you want at the bottom 
Yeah, and and there there's a lot of stuff in play, I suppose, with Hiwaki Kanoa, and so I, I don't want to overstep. But there's so we've used CO two equivalents here. If you treat that as say GWP star, which treats CO two as a separate gas, that the whole balance that netting off becomes quite different, and there's there are options, I suppose, on the table where you don't even use a, 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 a metric. That if you're pricing it on how these gases, as, as primary industries, are tracking towards achieving those targets, that you actually you have a value per unit set at the national level, and you have a, that price applied to your emissions there. And then, based on how they're tracking towards the target, reflects how that price goes up. So like, I suppose I, I can't yeah, probably can't say too much because we don't want because a lot of that stuff hasn't been settled yet, and there's a yeah, it's quite a big tent. Just going back to that previous page about the, um, about the, um, the page four, the page four, sorry, mine about the yeah, vegetation, yeah, vegetation offsets. What would happen if you put the grassland, the grassland, etc. Yeah. So a lot, I suppose, like I said at the start, we, we had a fairly tight time frame and we, went, we, we I suppose we didn't have the remit to go out and do the research and no, include research. Yeah. Well, the research was probably done. I mean, if you put yeah. beef and lamb and uh, you push the fact, is that it? For it? So for our starting point, we want what's accepted. If we, if, because it, it, is, it is a balance, like we can lead and, and that's, and I, I've said that to colleagues that we've got the opportunity here to put in if it's backed by the science, that we can go and head with it. The balance is, is that by leading, we're not burning the bridge behind us as well, that we go and stand on everyone's toes. So it, it is a balance. Um, but yeah, I, so I suppose using, using our own farm as a, um, as a, I suppose a case study, we, we won one of the balance innovation awards around tree planting. My old man's a nerd about his trees. He can identify everything and he... Um, present of um, farm forestry and stuff like that. Trees all over the place. When we got early on in the ETS, we got the uh, consultant across the place. You know, okay, what have we got here? Bugger rule, because it's all it's all sheltered belts, um, uh, poplars, uh, very little stands. You know, it's planted as a farm to grow grass. Um, so I do have a personal perspective that yes, we should be trying to. In encouraged to have more in but it is a balance like if we got the tool if we say we don't want this tool kicked out and then that means that we don't have a free farmer facing tool for farmers to meet the these milestones to keep us out of the ETS so that's that's the balance I suppose the grass won't so that's probably a harder one to get over the line than some of the other opportunities that we have um, there's been some good research coming out of say, uh, I think it was either Ag Research or Landcare, where they'd gone through mapping the soils using LUC, uh, I think was the baseline for that. But those soils that have uh, capacity to retain carbon, then uh, for lack of a better term, less volatile as well. And also, and then if you go out and measure how much carbon you got in there, you've identified areas where you've got potential carbon sinks in your farm by so developing the, the organic horizon in that soil, you, you could tie up carbon. But that's the, the science, the, something that we use. Yeah, it, it's, if someone gives us the coefficient for it, we'll bang it in there. You know, we won't, we won't hesitate. But um, getting that accepted science is, is I suppose, the, the pinch point. Uh, quickly, is wool, is there for wool, you know, We could put that in, because um, that's in your statement of accounts. Theory, again, that accepted coefficient. And I know 50% like chemical weight of wool is carbon, uh, but it also does break down as well. So they'd have to, part that you essentially need the life cycle of it. And it's something that was, you know, if you had a slightly longer, um, if the breakdown of wool was slightly longer than methane, and you had, um, and as, as we've had, a 50% reduction in U numbers since 1990s, but maintain land production. But if that's slightly slower, then you're actually retaining, that's, one's going down slower than the other, that you're actually tying up um, carbon by, with that reduction in numbers. And 
yeah. You're, and even if they're flat, you've got more getting tied up than being released through. Um, you can't hear it so. you can't hear it oh, sorry. <coughs> My voice is just coming back from yesterday. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, just wondering, like, you're obviously saying that you want to, we're wanting to get to a position where we're recording it annually, but we're showing that we're improving or decreasing our net emissions. <coughs> so there's no factor in there how we can influence the size of animals, et cetera, because obviously no. you standardise everyone under one. Yep, yep. So we, we call, yeah, we call this tool, uh, you know, and it's that balance between um, what's accept, what's practical for the majority of farmers, because we need to hit that 100%. And so if they go, if we were doing it that you're having to put through all your weights, you know, a farm's going to go out and work at those average weights at different times of the year, um, and the breeds and the feed and stuff. This, I suppose, is a, a top down. So we start from that cloud and allocate it at finer and finer points to what's reasonable to, uh, to down on the farm level, to go to that next level, um, if if you uh, that's going to those proprietary tools. So like your farm access overseers, where they start from a, it's a, essentially a dry matter um, production model and utilisation. They build up from the ground up, and that's where you can start applying those management tools or the breeds and stuff. We've got yeah a concept of how we can start putting in some management. Um, things, but that's a fair amount of work, and we've got you know to hit those milestones for Hiwaki Ekanoa, it's it's tight. Basically, under that model, though, we can only reduce animals. Yeah, but this is like I said, it's a reporting tool. Those other ones have the management tools. I guess the burning question is who's peer reviewed the work, or has the work been peer reviewed? Currently, now it's so it's uh, this this farm here is an example farm that we get given data from the Hiwaki Ekanoa office and we send it back out to them and they, they're going through an assessment currently. I guess my question is, is there, is there another body that sits above here at Wakanoa that actually um, peer reviews what's going on in terms of um, models or is it essentially a negotiation thing between beef and lamb and here, here at Wakanoa? Um, I wouldn't say it's, a, I suppose, a negotiation with them, but um, we want the tool accepted. So um, again, going back to that free farmer facing tool. Um, no, the, I suppose there isn't, there's, no, that, that's, it's the reporting work stream of Hiwaki Ekanoa that this gets accepted by. Um, and we've used accepted science, but we are, uh, you know, to get those other, um, say more categories of uh, vegetation included, we, we're working with, uh, I suppose, having those conversations with MPI and uh, MFE. With, with the conventional forest trees, yeah. um, does that work out just on the standard lookup table? Yes. Or is there an option with many of us who have we've got that open exit area where we actually measured it to say, well, actually, we've got this measured carbon rather than just lookup tables? If that yeah. actually could make a huge, like, for example, lookup tables in the area are about 27 tonnes. Uh, I know other areas that are, that are 37 actual measures, and I know other areas that went up. To yeah, so and, and there's gro there's growth rates as, as well by um, by region as well. So these are these are more uh, detail that we can add in, uh, and they they are yep. they're on the menu. You know, yeah, that that that's the, stuff that we're well, looking to approach. But it, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's yeah. But but for the next two years, we need to get that 100 percent. Otherwise, it's ETS. Yeah. Um, so the first bit about um, reporting, as an industry body, Beef and Lamb New Zealand have to do it for our for our um, levy payers. That's uh, uh, something that's going to be included in this as a unique identifier, and we've I've had conversations with um, with our own with our own beef and lamb people. The best one seems to be the GST number of the trading account, and that's the unique identifier. It's not necessarily report, it won't be reported because we only need to report the aggregate numbers. So that'll be held. They'll be tied up in our own in the privacy and all that. So that's not going to be given. Published. No, it won't be. No, no. But we just needed one a uh, uh, number so that we you know say I went and did parents farm and. My mother had done it, and then my brother helped my dad do it and stuff. And we've got three accounts for one farm, so we need we need to have some. So, and then we'll be talking with the overseers and farm axes as well uh, about that. 
so that we're not double counting because they'll have they'll. So Beaver Lab needs to demonstrate. That yes. Yep. Dairy NZ will do it. Hort NZ, Far, they'll all do it for their for their um, levy pass. So, so this tool really is an information gathering tool to establish on a farm level, given the production type and the region, what levels of carbon sequestration or what emissions it's doing so that you can establish what's high or what's not? No, no, we won't be doing that with this information. Um, this is a reporting tool and it's, it's for the farmer to use. We need to know that farmers have done it. Now, in the survey this year, we've and this, sorry, there was a second point to that question that actually ties to that. In the survey, we've been measuring, uh, economic service managers have been measuring the sequestration. And because this calculation here can be done through the survey as well, we will have benchmarking data for by class and production region for emissions. And we'll be able to, um, and so with that, we've got benchmarking data. You can see against similar types of farms in the same region, how, where your number sits with that, but so also, no, not yet, no, no. Do you know, Michael, what day when the survey close? It'll be a couple of months after that, so we're still a few months off, I'd say. Um, also, tying this in with the yardstick, we can start um, doing metrics of net emissions per kg of production, net emissions per EBIT REM. That we can start seeing. So it might tease out that if you're grazing on some dairy heifers, you can see that you know, you've got an emissions bill um, potentially to those, uh, those heifers that you've brought on, whether you might actually need to up that, um, that grazing rate because you know, that's eaten into it or it, it's adding too much more emissions than it's paying for. Those, those sort of things. Then it starts becoming management. No, if you're grazing in. So if you if if you've bought um, someone, you're grazing on a mob of heifers, um, you'll be able to put it in a bit of context. So the last question, <coughs> white shirt. No, I think you can have it. All right. The last question. Um, if you're using a standardised balance gauge, or if yes, you've got guys balancing in March, they have to adjust their figures. Yeah, so it, it's done to a June balance state, which is about 75% of the, of the sheep and beef sector. Uh, it's over the season, it'll, it'll sort of come out in the wash. The main issue with the non-June balance dates is the ageing up, and that, that's been probably the one main thing that trips people up. Is, so they'll have a March balance date, age, age everything up to hoggets, but then on the, also on the balance sheet, they've sold it as a lamb. And so your losses for your adults um, you get negative losses for your adults, which is impossible. You're picking up sheep from some of years. So, yeah, so that, that's the main catch, and we'll have um, wording around that to just make it really clear. Thank you, Ben. Um, really informative. Thanks very much. And uh, so important for us as farmers to um, meet that 100% target uh, for end of uh, 2022 and just staying out of the ETS. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. Um, what how, the consequences that will have for uh, the industry. Um, please accept this gift, Ben, and uh, thanks very much. Cheers. 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 Put the hands together, please.